welcome back to my channel and welcome to another day of vlogmas so today i thought we would just have a casual little chat about friendship as an adult so mostly like how to make friends as an adult and the fact that it's hard to make friends as an adult so i thought until recently and also friendship breakups as an adult so actually, I want to start out with the idea of friendship breakups because I feel like it's better to start with a negative and end on a positive, maybe. So friendship breakups. So I went through basically a friendship breakup about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, with somebody that I was good friends with during college and someone I became even closer with when I moved to Philly because she also lives in Philly. And the slow burn sort of demise of that friendship uh, was really difficult for me but also made me think about a lot of things about what I want in a friend, what I need in a friend, what makes a good friend, what makes a friend that is not worthwhile to maintain. I had so many conversations with my therapist about this and honestly I was a little bit frustrated that I was using my time in therapy which was supposed to be dedicated to something else very specific but this friendship was causing so much stress and upset for me in my life that I was devoting like multiple hours of my therapy sessions to talk about this until it finally ended. And once it ended, I felt so much better and I feel like we never had to talk about it in therapy again because it was just resolved. So I don't wanna go into too much specific detail because I don't wanna drag this person. I don't want like anything negative towards them, but just to speak a little bit more generally about what that friendship was like and why I knew it was time for it to end. I think something really important to consider in a friendship is whether it's equally balanced or like if there's a push and pull from both sides. So that was one of the of questions my therapist asked me about this friendship that was really formative in me deciding to end the friendship and the way she put it I think was is this an equal friendship and if it's not could it ever be and once I started realizing that like the answer to both of those questions is no like definitely it wasn't equal at that time and then could it ever be equal I felt like that would be really difficult to get to that point. And I didn't feel like the other person was willing or able to put in the work to do that or like just didn't have the tools necessary in their life and their phase of life and everything to be able to give back to me the support and the attention that I was giving to them. I just remember like they would call me during like important moments, like when I was home last year for the holidays with my family, spending time with my family who I hadn't seen for like almost a year, just them calling me to completely interrupt my day and like need my immediate attention for something that was so important to them, but like really not very important to me without any sort of asking me like, hey, are you available right now? Like, can I talk to you about something heavy right now? Like just bombarding me with stuff like this. And this happened all the time. Yet, whenever I was going through something that was like really upsetting me or really difficult for me, I felt like they just brushed it off and like didn't want to talk about it, didn't have time for me, didn't have space for any of my emotions. Yet they wanted me to make time and space for them all the time on demand. And I just felt like, it really wasn't fair to me. I felt like I was being treated kind of like a therapist instead of a friend. And of course, I think that that element is there and like is probably important for a lot of friendships of like being able to talk to your friends very deeply and like share what you really feel and everything like that. But I just feel like there's a limit to that. And like that has to be consented to, especially if you're dumping like really heavy stuff on somebody they need to be able to be prepared for that. If that's happening all the time, I think maybe you need an outlet for that other than a friend, like someone like a therapist who can truly help you with like the root cause of those problems or those feelings. So I don't know, I just started to feel very exhausted and very overwhelmed in proximity to this person because they were feeling exhausted and overwhelmed all the time. And I just felt like there was no space for me to like exist or be myself in that friendship. And I think that they also probably had their own issues with the friendship as well, because when we decided to kind of stop talking, we never really talked about the problems because from my perspective, I just felt like I have nothing helpful to contribute. Like, I'm not just going to sit and tell you all the things that you've done that have bothered me because it's not going to help. Like, it's not going to change. I don't want to continue the friendship. So it's not something that's going to be improved. Like, all that would do is make you feel bad without resolving the situation. So we just kind of were like, it was like a very impersonal, like, 
exchanging of belongings back and forth. And then we just haven't spoken, like haven't spoken, haven't seen each other, haven't talked at all, unfollowed each other on social media. And like, honestly, that's fine. Like, it does make me feel sad. And like, obviously I've been thinking about it for the past year because I'm sitting here talking about it, but I don't know. It just made me feel really guilty and really sad when it first happened. And I think now that there's been some time gone by, I really feel like it was the right decision. I don't miss it in my life. I think if I did miss that friendship, you know, I would be prompted to reach out or like see what's going on, but I really don't. I just feel like once that person was out of my life, I had so much more space and time to not feel all these negative things that I was feeling around them. And I feel like, maybe I'll know when I edit this, but I feel like it's coming off like very harsh towards this person. I really don't mean it that way. I just think that like the type of friend they needed or the type of relationship they needed with a person I was not a good fit for. Like, I don't think I was able to provide what they needed. I do think they were asking too much of me, but at the same time, like, I just don't think that we made a good pair. So I don't want to make it sound like this was all their fault and it's all on them. Like, there's definitely things that I was not well suited for in that friendship either. I don't know. I think sometimes it just happens that way. But on the flip side of that, I think that because that friendship ended at the very beginning of 2022, I was able to spend a lot of time in 2022 making really intentional friendships that have boundaries that are suited to what I'm looking for in a friend, to what they're looking for in a friend. And I always thought that making friends as an adult was really hard. And I think that it is, like it's really hard. And a lot of it is mostly just complicated by life situations. Like people have different work schedules, they're not available, they're exhausted. Sometimes people are married or they have kids, they have other obligations. So being friends as an adult is really, really difficult sometimes. However, making friends is the thing that I thought was hard. And for me, it's been a bit easier than I thought. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit too. So I have about, four people I would say that live in Philadelphia who are like my good friends now and it's kind of funny because they're all like separate like I met and became friends with them at all separate times in different ways so that's one thing that's a little bit of a bummer to me is that like none of my friends really know or are friends with each other and I'm trying to change that slowly but I met and became friends with them all in very different ways so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit one of my friends I met through CASA which is the volunteer group that I work with. I actually just made a video about them. I'll link it up here. But there was another young woman who was in my CASA training class. And during the class, I kind of picked up the fact that we were around the same age. We kind of lived in the same neighborhood because she mentioned the area that she lived. I thought she was really nice. Like her contributions to the class were really smart. They were not a waste of time, which many other people's contributions were. So the only information I had from her was her email address from the class. So I sent her an email, which feels like a very old school way to make a friend, but that was all I had about her. I didn't even know her last name, I don't think. So I sent her an email and I was just like, hey, it seems like we live in the same neighborhood. We both moved to Philly around the same time. Like you seem really cool. What do you wanna hang out sometime? So we ended up hanging out and we just really liked each other right away and we have become really good friends. I see her a lot, I text her a lot. So that was like, a great outcome for me because also we both volunteer with the same organization and we work with different kids but because we're both in the same organization we're allowed to speak freely about our cases because the cases we work on are largely confidential because it's like private information about the kids that we work with but because we work in the same organization we can talk about it together so that's really helpful like I'm working with a kid who's in elementary school, her kid is in like middle school or high school. So they're very different cases, but it's really nice for us to just kind of like share ideas and like talk about things that might help for our different situations. So all that is to say, I think meeting people through like a hobby or a volunteer group that you do is a really great way to make friends. Like you already have one shared common interest. And of course, there's always the opportunity to find out that you have more in common with somebody. So highly recommend that if you are looking for a way to make friends as an adult, start volunteering or join like a group or a club in your area and just see if any of the people there are cool. Another one of my friends that I've made recently, which is a really cute story, actually came from YouTube. So one of the girls that I'm now friends with saw my apartment tour video. I will link that up here if you guys wanna watch it. But she saw my apartment tour 
and she reached out to me on Instagram because my Instagram is always linked in my description. So she found me on Instagram and reached out and she just said something like, hey, I hope this isn't weird, but I watched your apartment video. I really like your style. Like I watched a lot of apartment videos and I haven't really connected with anyone else's style as much as you. And so she just like complimented my video and sent me this nice message. And I wrote back to her right away. I was like, no, that's not weird at all. Thank you so much for watching. Like, you know, we started just chatting and I found out that she also lived in Philly and she didn't live too far from me. So we ended up meeting at the farmer's market to just kind of like, you know, this is like a stranger from the internet. So I felt like we should just meet up like in a public place during the day and see if everything was cool. So we like met each other. She was super nice. We hung out for a few hours that day and we have been friends since then. I really, really love being friends with her. She is really into like vintage and secondhand and thrifting. So it's been really fun to have somebody to do those kinds of activities with. And they came from YouTube, which is such a wonderful little nugget for my channel. One of my other friends is kind of a similar story, kind of actually halfway in between these two. So this was a girl I met from one of the like Philadelphia, like 20s and 30s making friends Facebook groups. I joined a few of those when I first moved to Philly just to see like if anyone out here was like cool or interesting. And she did a post where, you know, same sort of thing. Like I found out that she lived in my area and she had some of the same interests as me and she was really cute. So I just messaged her and we did the same thing. We went to the park, we met each other, we went for a little walk to see if each other were normal. And once we both were, we became friends. And she actually lives really close to me, so I see her all the time. So that's another thing. If you feel like you wanna join one of your Facebook groups for your local area to just see like who's out there, I will say a lot of it is like weird people or like, guys who are looking for a date like i did a post on there when i first moved to just like introduce myself and put a few pictures of me and like 98 percent of the responses i got were creepy guys trying to ask me out and so i just deleted the post because i didn't want to deal with that but once in a while there is a gem which is my new friend so i'm really grateful that i met her from facebook and then the last person that i had in mind when i was talking about my four philly friends is a girl who i met like honestly in such a weird way like i don't really need to get into the whole backstory of it but she was like a friend of a friend at some event that we both attended like a long time ago and then when i moved to philly i was reminded that she lived here and even though we had only met each other once it was the same thing like i just reached out i was like hey would you ever want to hang out we hung out, we really like each other, we really get along, so now we are friends and it's great. And honestly, that's like the main thing that I wanna underline as like the main takeaway for myself and hopefully for you guys from the past year of me trying to make friends in Philly is that you just have to ask people if they wanna be your friend, which like, again, sounds kind of cheesy and like silly and juvenile or something, but like, that's honestly what you need to do. Like if you meet someone who you think is cool or they're like a friend of a friend or you tangentially know them from somewhere, like just send them a text and be like, hey, like you seem cool. Do you wanna hang out sometime? Do you wanna go for a walk? Would you like to have lunch with me? Like just put yourself out there and like ask them if they wanna hang out. And that has been very successful with me. Like even beyond the four people that I just mentioned, like there's a lot of other people that I have developed friendships with or like I'm currently working on that because I've been putting myself out there and just asking them if they wanna do things with me. And that makes me feel really good. I think a lot of times people do like each other and they're just nervous to like put themselves out and ask if that person wants to hang out. I think now that I've started doing that, I've seen the return. Like I have more people that I can talk to. I have more people that I can connect with and like spend time with and do fun things with. I know that some people have like a really tight knit group of friends. Like my best friend, who's my best friend from high school, she has a whole group of like seven or eight people from college and they're all like as a group best friends with each other and like i love watching that like i sometimes will get to spend time with them as like the tangential friend to that group and like i love all of them and i feel jealous sometimes that she has this like really tight group of people that have known each other for so long and it's like they're all together they have group chats they have memes they have memories i've never really had something like that and I think that instead of just feeling sorry for myself that I don't have friendships like that, I'm just gonna go and create my own friendships. And like I said, even though these are all one-off friendships where none of these people really know each other, I'm trying to slowly bring them together because I do think that a lot of my friends would like each other and get along. So now that my 2022 project was making friends, perhaps my 2023 project will be 
grouping them into one group. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm mostly joking, but that would be nice. So I know this is kind of a more just like casual chatty video, but really what I'm trying to say, I guess, is if you have friendships that are not working for you, that are making you upset and sad, it's okay to walk away from those friendships and you can do it in a kind way. And if you have cool people in your life that you would like to know better, ask them to hang out and try to become their friend because they probably are looking for friends too. So that's really all I have for you guys on this topic. A lot of these ideas have been kind of swirling around in my head for the past year and I really just wanted to get them all into one place, hopefully in a format that is helpful to somebody else. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I will see you tomorrow for another Vlogmas video. Bye!